Alright, welcome to another video, and before we get started, I'd like to take a quick minute to thank all the Patreon supporters and YouTube channel members whose names you see scrolling across the screen right now. Uh, they make this financially possible, and without you, I probably wouldn't be here making videos, so thank you. Alright, so we're flying, we're finally able to get back in the air. We've just taken off, we've been in the air for a moment. And we're flying the swordfish, as you can see here. Um... Weather has been pretty crap lately, and uh, I've just kind of been caught up with other projects the few times that I did get a break in the weather and was able to fly, or had an opportunity to fly anyway. I was always caught up doing something else, and those opportunities were few and far between anyway. Uh, but obviously today we were able to get in the air. The weather is actually quite nice today, which is pretty surprising. Um, you see the farmers have been in the fields and been able to work. Everything's kind of dried up. We had a lot of rain uh, earlier in the week, earlier last week, and uh, I don't know, it just seems to have taken a turn for the better here lately. So I've taken the opportunity to fly the swordfish. Um, while we were down and not flying, I uh, did some updating. Cruise. Go to cruise mode. I did some updating of updated firmware and... Uh, Change a few little things. You see I'm running the black uh, propellers. I changed those over to the 6 inch Jim uh, Fan flash props. And I went back to the 6x4.5, these off-brand propellers that I tend to like on a few of my airplanes. They run pretty smooth and efficiently, so I'm just kind of going back to those for a minute. And one thing I'd made, one change that I made in the uh, firmware in the configuration for RG Pilot while I was out working on things, um, while I was not flying anyway and working on things, I made a change to the uh, rudder mix in RG Pilot. And the hope was to kind of tame that little bit of wandering that we see. On the heading while we're flying in cruise mode and I see that it is still there I don't think it's changed for the better it may be slightly improved but I basically I reduced that rudder mix in half and I thought that might be the culprit but it doesn't seem to be or at least maybe I need to lower it even more um, but I'll play around with that some more in the future and see if we can maybe get things squared away there But I am running a beta version of RG Pilot now rather than the dev build that I had on here previously. I went to the beta version that was released 4.4 beta. And the idea was just to get a little bit more stable and tested firmware on the airplane. Which the dev build was working fine, but the beta is going to be a little bit newer than that. So I opted to uh, update to that. Um, didn't really make any other changes to this one, to this airplane, although I did update all of my RG plane planes to 4.4 uh, beta, and I also made a few changes in the, uh, the He-Wing T1 Ranger. I posted in my uh, Discord, I showed a picture of my motor mounts that were cracked. After I watched Giz FPV's videos, I decided to go ahead and check mine. And they were indeed cracked. Very similar to what he saw with his. I just, I think I was lucky enough to catch it before it actually failed. So big thank you to him for the motivation to uh, take a closer look at it. And it is an issue that I've known about with the T1 Ranger. The plastic mounts do tend to get brittle and break over time. And I just kind of written mine off as seemed, they seemed like they were going to hold up. Because they, they were holding up. But I decided to go ahead and look closer and they were all cracked up. So I replaced those with some 3D printed mounts. And I also swapped out its GPS to the Walksnow GPS that I had ordered for it. And I did enable the compass on there. And... Uh, I don't think I made any other changes. I did move my uh, crossfire antenna further back on the tail on that one. And again, that's just one of those things that I had wanted to do earlier on and I just kind of never really gotten around to it. 
but we've done it now. So the next time we fly that one, it should be all up to date and hopefully improved. And let's see what else did we do. I don't think I really made any, any more changes besides updating firmware. But anyway, as far as today, like I said, I'm just happy to get out and fly and kind of get back in the swing of things. It's been too long since I've been able to fly and I was kind of missing it quite a bit. And I do kind of notice a little bit of vibration in the propeller there. Or from the propellers. So they're probably not going to be any smoother than the Gym Fan Flash. Um, I may end up going back to those Flash propellers. I seem to be kind of just bouncing around between the two. And they do work equally well it seems, but... As far as this little bit of slow wandering on the pitch axis, I do still need to look into that. Um, see, it's, it's times like this where I wish I had a stable telemetry link to the airplane, and I ram, I'm running Crossfire. And when I say a stable telemetry link, obviously we have telemetry, but I don't have a full transparent serial link to be able to change parameters in the airplane through Mission Planner while I'm flying it. See a bird flying down there. Just over the treetops. Um, but yeah, if I had something like a Dragon Link or even just a radio modem or something like that where I was able to get that fully functional serial link to the flight controller to Ardu Pilot while I'm out here flying, I would be able to adjust those parameters and I could tweak that rudder mix even more and see if I was able to tune that out. Because I do still have some doubt as to whether it's that or not. Um, but I'm able, not able to rule it out just yet. It's basically the, 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 it's the KFF rudder mix is the parameter that I'm talking about. It defaults to 0 0.5 and I've cut that in half to 0 0.25 and it really doesn't seem to have changed much. Um, in fact, I notice it's wandering quite a bit more while I'm holding a little bit of an elevator right now and requesting it to climb a bit. I was going to climb up to around 300 feet or so and level off here. And during that climb, it seemed to be wandering even more. So what we can do, though, um, I did just want to kind of fly out to this area right here. And I want to look down during this turn if I can. If my wing doesn't block it, which it is kind of blocking things. Not able to see that little animal trap down there that I was kind of curious about. I uh, should be right down in the clearing in the woods right there, but I don't see it. And that's if it's even still there. It might even be picked up by now. But um, what I can do is on the way home here, I can go back to fly by wire mode. And I can do some hard banks left and right and check that rudder mix and see if it seems to be too much or not enough rudder mix. So I'm going to go to fly by wire. Fly by wire A. And I want to kind of back off my power a little bit and let everything settle into a nice stable cruise. Kind of adjust my heading a bit. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to bank the airplane full left and then full, back full right. And then back full left again and then back full right again. And basically when we're transitioning from full left to full right bank angle in fly by wire mode, I want to look and see while it as the wings pass through level i want to see if the airplane is yawing into that roll or opposite that roll and that'll tell me if i have too much or too little rudder mix so let's start doing that now we're going to go full left now full right now as the wings roll through level it seems that the nose is not really yawing so i think we're actually pretty close on that rudder mix That really does look good to me. Um, and basically what that rudder mix does, it coordinates your turns. It puts some yaw mix into your roll inputs. And it basically gives you a, a nice coordinated turn. As you can see here, I'm just turning with just the aileron stick. Just roll input and we have a nice bit of yaw 
mixed into it automatically by the auto, the uh, autopilot, by autopilot. Um, and basically, like I said, as you roll from full left bank angle, which we are now, if we go back to full right bank angle, as the wings pass through level, and the same thing going from right back to left, you see, as the wings pass through level, there's no yaw left or right. And that's kind of what you want to look for. And this this seems to be nice, nicely coordinated and balanced. So if it's not that parameter, that rudder mix, then I'm not sure what the issue could be. I'll have to uh, investigate a little bit further, but I think at this point I'm able to rule it out. So it really does look nicely coordinated and uh, lowering a bit didn't seem to make much improvement anyway, or really much change at all. But it definitely feels locked in and rock solid, and I believe it is tuned well. Um, it flies like it's tuned very well in fly-by-wire. It's just in your navigation mode you have that wandering, that kind of hunting left and right on the nose, and you can see that. You can see how straight and smooth we're flying in fly-by-wire. If we go to cruise, which is just going to basically add heading and altitude hole to this mode that we're in right now. Cruise. If we enable cruise, we've not touched the sticks or anything, just switch modes to cruise. You'll see it's already started to pick up that little bit of oscillation on the yaw axis. And not necessarily an oscillation, it's just kind of a slow wagging left and right, slow hunting. And I don't think that's anything to do with the way the airplane is set up or trimmed or anything like that because it only happens in navigation modes. And it can do that, it'll do that while flying a mission, it'll do it while in return to home or in cruise mode. Anything that's trying to hold a heading, it will wander a bit like this. So I do believe um, that is something that's going to still need a little bit more work and improvement in the future. Uh, but for now, we're pretty happy with it. It's totally functional. It's just not as dialed in as I know it that it can be. And you can see I'm going to switch back to fiber wire and still not touching the sticks. It just immediately stops hunting left and right. It just kind of calms right down. So that is something to do with the navigation. And like I said, it's something that we'll just have to uh, tune out of it later. But for now, I'm just going to kind of cruise around a little bit. We've only been in the air for like 13 and a half minutes. So I'm just going to kind of uh, fly around a little bit and enjoy the airplane before the dark catches up with us. And uh, see, we have a nice sunset starting to develop out there. We still have plenty of time before we have to get back on the ground. But um, I'm just happy to be flying. Like I said, it's been far too long. Been having a lot of wind and rain, and usually when I have a, a period of downtime where I'm not flying regularly like that, I'll end up trying to tackle projects that I've been putting off. While the weather's good, I tend to try to fly more often than not, and I'll usually put off other things as far as maintenance around the house and other projects, things like that, that I try not to get into. And uh, then when I'm not able to fly, I'll start trying to catch up on all that stuff, start checking things off my list. And then when the weather does finally kind of calm down and allow me to fly, then I'm already kind of in the middle of something else. So, uh, like I said, I just had a chance to fly today and wanted to see if it was that rudder mix was a culprit or not. And I was kind of hoping it was so that I could finally get this all dialed in and tuned up and behind me and uh, move on to something else but it doesn't seem to be the case so I guess the next time we fly we will be doing more RG pilot tuning um, in the meantime I'll uh, start reading up on some of this stuff and maybe reach out for help from other people that are more experienced and maybe might know what to look for give me some pointers what to check out maybe look over some logs and things like that See if we can pin it down. Because I know this little airplane can fly well. And I do still think it's related to that V-tail. And I've just never been a fan of the way V-tails fly. They always have their little quirks and annoyances kind of like this. I had the same issues with my uh, Mini Talon. 
and the nano talons and uh I mean they look cool. I like I like the way they look. I like the the ideas behind them. I like the way they they keep the tail surfaces out of the grass while landing. There I mean there's a lot of positives. You know, good points to find with a V-tail. They just they're always harder to kind of fine tune and get them dialed in. They always have their little quirks and annoyances. And then this one being a relatively shallow forward swept V-tail, which is pretty unique in itself. And then it's a relatively large area um, when comparing it to the wing surface. Or the surface of the wing area anyway. Wing area of, or you know what I'm trying to say. The area of the wing surface. Um, the tail is relatively large when comparing it to the tail or to the wing. So there's a lot of uh, uniqueness. I'll just call it that. And uh, part of me still wants to cut this tail off and stick a conventional tail on it. And I know the airplane would fly better if it had a conventional tail. But I can't bring myself to start hacking it up just yet. Because it really does look nice. And I really do want to try to figure this out and get it dialed in. Just just like I said, just for the challenge. Because this, these little challenges like this are things that interest me. You know, often more than just the joy of flying itself. I, I enjoy trying to tackle these little challenges and, and approach them as a learning experience. And just and that's where I get my uh, enjoyment from it. But... Anyway, I guess we're just going to kind of cruise out here to our little two mile away point, which is kind of where that, that animal trap is. I'm actually going to get kind of off the side of that area so that I can make a shallow orbit around it. And I'm going to go to cruise, cruise. which is a little bit uh, less than ideal for holding a rate of turn and things like that. But I do want to let it manage my altitude for me while I do this bank. Now doing this slow, larger orbit around where I think that animal trap is down in the woods is actually going to make it harder to see because my wing is not rolled enough so that I can see over the wing tip like I can if I bank more. But when I bank enough to see over the wing tip, then it's difficult to stay right in the area that I need to be. I end up making a tighter loiter that I don't want to that I don't want to make. And it makes it a little bit harder to pinpoint where the actual point of interest is on the ground. So if I actually bank here I can kind of see down into the trail right down there over the motor. And let me kind of bank, do a sharp bank and look over the wing tip this way. And maybe kind of watch behind the wing here. I'm just not seeing the animal trap down there. Oh, there it is. It's just over the wing tip now. You can see it. So yeah, it's still down there. It's just kind of hard to look down into the woods. You kind of need to look straight down to see it. And it's hard to look straight down with this little plane not having a tilt axis. And with the position that the camera is mounted, it makes it a little difficult to be able to look straight down. Not pretty much impossible, really. But at this point, I guess we'll uh, go ahead and fly back home and get ready to get on the ground. Just so that the video doesn't end up being unnecessarily long and boring and people click away from it. But what I want to do is I want to go to return to home mode. So I'll go do ahead and do that now. Return to launch. Which is going to fly the airplane home. But I just want to demonstrate that that same little wandering on the heading... The yaw axis is also present in return to launch. You can kind of see it's starting to develop that now. And you see we're slowly losing altitude. And the reason for that is it's flying a course. It's basically flying a trajectory that will land the airplane loitering home at 200 feet altitude. So we're basically just going to slowly lose altitude at a rate that means we'll reach 200 feet at the point where we start loitering home. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cancel return to launch. I'm going to go back to cruise. Fly by wire A. Actually, fly by wire A is what I meant to say. And I'm going to cut some power and get down and fly the bayou back home. Just to uh, change it up a bit. 
And there now, if we actually get the propellers to stop and glide with the power off, you can see those black propellers that I was talking about earlier. They're just some old generic, uh, not even sure what style propeller they are. But they're 6x4.5. And what I found with the 6 inch props, both these as well as the, uh, the Gym Fan Flash 6 inch props, the ESC brakes are strong enough to bring them to a dead stop. Or with the seven inch props, you couldn't really stop them. Even even if you pulled the nose up and slowed the airplane enough to force their the uh, propellers to stop rotating, it uh, they would still eventually start rotating rotating again on their own once the airspeed came back up enough. And I find it easier to fully stop the propellers with the six inch props. It's just another small difference I had noticed. So we're actually going to fly the roadway here, kind of across the, le the levee and the bayou from the house. I just kind of want to uh, get a look at the ponds out here, which are not always full, but they are right now, like I said, with all the wind we've had recently. Kind of filled those ponds up quite a bit. And I was kind of thinking we might be able to see some traffic on the highway over here, but unfortunately we don't seem to have any of that. Although the wind is a little bit more favored from the south, which means it's kind of rolling over the tree line. So the turbulent air is to the north of the tree line today. Unlike when it's wind is from the north and turbulent air is on my side, on the south of the tree line. So that's going to make for some smooth landings. As you see, we do have a little bit of a tailwind, but not a whole lot. Now, I know I said I was going to come back and land and end the video, but the sunset is looking pretty nice and we still have... Plenty of battery left and the air is kind of calming down, getting smooth. So we might go ahead and uh, burn off some more battery out here before I land. You can kind of feel that wind as we turn back into the wind. It almost feels like we're drifting sideways, which I guess relative to the ground we are, but. It's a lot, a lot more calm than this. It's actually dead calm down on the ground. It's showing about a six or seven mile an hour wind up here at altitude. So we're just going to kind of cruise back up the bayou up this way. And I don't know, we might go make some low passes out by the cows or something like that. A cow pasture. See what's going on out there. You can kind of feel the airplanes getting bumped around a little bit. And the autopilot is doing a good job in fly-by-wire. Obviously, it's a stabilized mode. It's doing a good job of fighting that wind, of kind of countering it, smoothing it out. It's just, and when I say I feel it and it's fighting it and all, I mean, it's it's not an issue at all. It's just enough to notice it, enough to see that it's there. You see otherwise like this when we're not getting hit from wind gusts. I mean, the airplane is like super rock solid and stable and smooth and everything feels really good. It just makes those little minor disturbances, minor gusts here and there a little bit more noticeable than they would be otherwise. I think that may actually be a car on the roadway. And just past the little road that crosses the bridge and comes back. That's either a car or a road sign. I think it might just be a road sign. Yeah, that's all it is. I thought that was a vehicle with some headlights or something like that, but no, it's just it's just a road sign. Still not used to being able to see as much detail as we are flying HD. Compare it to flying analog. You see some of the sugar cane farmers are out here still working. They have a little operation going on down here. You see a vehicle on the roadway there. Truck pulling a trailer. Not sure what's on his trailer. Or even what kind of trailer it is. And yeah, it is times like this where I miss having my tilt axis. But like I said... I do enjoy the view from this plane otherwise. 
especially being a twin and being able to, being able to see the motors and everything like that look out between them over the nose I, I personally do enjoy the the view the look um but having this same view with a tilt axis would make the tilt axis pretty much useless i mean you wouldn't really be able to i mean if you look down you would just see more of the plane so i never really bothered putting one on or don't have any plans to um but yeah speaking of flying with hd a couple of times people, people have asked me now what size monitor i use to fly with um up until recently i've always used a 19 inch monitor that's actually carried over from like very early on in my analog days i started out, well, I started out with some really crappy small monitors or very early on. But the one I've flown most with over the years was a 19-inch um, Element TV that was sold at Walmart for quite some time. That used to be the, the the monitor of choice for analog people that flew with monitors. Um, it was able to tolerate quite a, a bad signal, an analog video signal before it went to a no signal screen or anything like that. It wasn't totally immune to it, but it was better than most cheap displays. And 19 inch was more than enough for analog. But what I'm flying on right now, actually a few weeks ago, I picked up a new monitor, uh, basically to make the most out of HD. I'm flying on a 32 inch, I wanna say. A cheap TV that was on sale for uh, like 138 something like that I think the little TCL smart TV that I picked up from Walmart and I'm using that with the HDMI input from Walksnow obviously and uh, it really is a better experience I'm able to appreciate the high definition because my old monitor was actually only 720p resolution and a couple of times I went to a little 15 inch a portable monitor, like a little 15.4 inch full 1080p portable monitor. I'd use that to just see what the 1080p looked like versus 720p. Because I do record in, in 1080p. I'm, I'm, you know, my, my walk snow system is set up for 1080p. And I was recording in 1080p on the PC, but my display was a 720p display that was downscaling the 1080p image. And to be honest, it looked really good. Coming from analog, obviously anything was going to look better. But um, I'm now flying on a full actual native 1080p 32 inch screen. And it really does look a lot better. It's a big improvement. Um, and it just kind of makes me appreciate the HD a little bit more. And I, I have that monitor mounted above two uh, 22 inch curved monitors that I have my PC on where I record as well as my uh, mission planner display or I have tracking on the map which I can show you that here a little GPS but um, I see that truck we were looking at earlier with the trailer he's actually stopped down here on the roadway so we'll make a little orbit over him out here see what he's up to I don't recognize the vehicle or the trailer. He's not one of our immediate neighbors, just probably someone passing through the area or whatever. And like I said, you can see there, it's, it's a little difficult to uh, look at objects on the ground when you need to look directly down below. There's another vehicle now coming off of the bridge. I'm curious if he's going to go over the bridge or if he's going to continue down towards this way. And he's turning across the bridge. So yeah, um, I've upgraded to a 32 inch monitor. And like I said, I do have the two 22 inch below it that have my computer stuff going on. And uh, actually, hear a vehicle coming now that I didn't see coming from this direction on the roadway. 
But you can see he actually came out of the field as one of the farmers. See his little dust trail down there. And like I said, you can see just how calm the air is down here. The, the dust along that, that road, the dirt road there through the field, the dust that they left is sitting pretty still down there, relatively still. It's not really being blown across the field. It is in parts, like further further south from here. It looked like it was kind of getting blown across the field, but for the most part, it's just kind of lingering around, which is usually a sign that the air is really dead calm. And dead calm air always means smooth air. So I do suspect we're going to have a nice smooth landing. And I normally try to land into the wind, which would obviously be landing west to east on my runway which is directly into the wind but i also believe that the wind is also pretty much going to be dead calm down low so i'm actually going to go down and check that I'll push the nose down lose some altitude pretty quick get down low i say we're going to make a low pass out over the cows anyway so we'll go we'll do that i want to see what this white spot in the field is out here not sure honestly but yeah, I want to make a, a low pass out over the cows and over the fields. And I just want to kind of get an idea of what the wind is doing down here. And you can see the, the wind estimate's already coming down and we haven't even really made any orbits. Which does make it a little bit easier for the autopilot to calculate wind speed and direction if you fly in a circle. I believe um, it's not as critical if you have an airspeed sensor. It can figure it out more accurately without doing circles, but we don't have an airspeed sensor on this plane. So it's just basically care, uh, comparing ground speed versus direction and the changes that the airplane makes while doing a circle, it'll kind of figure out, okay, we're going faster this direction and slower the opposite direction, so the wind must be blowing at this speed from this direction. It just kind of calculates that for you. But you can see as we do these little circles down here, it is kind of uh, coming down on the airspeed. It's down to 3.4 miles per hour wind speed, rather. And my ground speed and airspeed are starting to match up, so that wind speed is probably still a little bit high. I mean, it's pretty much calm down here. From what I can tell. See we're flying like 33, 32 miles an hour. Well about 30 miles an hour in this direction. And if we turn and fly the opposite direction. How is our ground speed going to compare? And we're still sitting on like 32, 34, 35. So okay I guess there is a few miles an hour wind. We just stirred up all the white birds down there. I didn't think they would be out this late. They usually go and roost. When it gets later in the day. But yeah, we're, we're looking at a couple of miles an hour wind down here. And you see my wind speed estimate is actually down to 2.6 miles an hour now as well. So we'll have some fun with the birds out here. Kind of throttle up so we don't get too slow and stall. Do a nasty snap. Snap spin or something down here. Kind of round up these birds and get them, get them flying, get them moving. They're pretty much just going to stay off of that wingtip as long as we're willing to chase them around out here. They'll, they'll fly circles with us like this. And they're doing it to keep you off of their tail is, is from what I've gathered. Because if you kind of leave them alone, they'll, they'll leave the area flying in, a, in just a straight direction away from you. And if you catch up with them, they'll start circling behind you like this. So I think as long as you're staying close enough to feel threatening, they'll just kind of do this evasive maneuver where they fly kind of where you can't really catch them but you'll notice now if we fly this way and leave them alone they're going to more than likely yeah you see they stop circling us now if I circle back around where I can get behind them watch my throttle see now we're gonna kind of be able to hit them off this way they'll change their course and they're trying to help climb us we'll climb up to them made a pretty close pass at that one 
So let's try to figure out where they're at. They're out this direction once again. And we'll climb up in them. Or close to them. And they're eventually going to outclimb us or dive and get away from us. They'll do something. Yeah, you see they're starting to dive again. And we can dive too though. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, just try as you might. You can't really catch them. They're just going to keep on doing that for as long as we're willing to follow them around, pretty much. Let's see if we can kind of catch up with them now. No, they're just trying something else. They're changing direction. And we'll go ahead and leave them alone now. All right, so that's been our fun. Um, are they still off our wingtip? Yep, pretty much. They're climbing again. But yeah, we're going to uh, make another pass over the cows, I guess. See if any of the birds return down there or not. Kind of wondering if all those white things on the ground out here are birds or just some kind of plants that came up. I don't think it's birds. It's probably just some kind of weed or whatever. So yeah, we have no more birds on the cows. We scared them all away. And I guess we'll make a run out this way. And uh, let's see. What are the farmers doing out here? Yeah, there's still a tractor back here. How are we looking on battery? Plenty good. I guess I'll make a run, make a low pass over the tractor out here. And... Uh, We'll call it quit soon after that. Obviously not too low. I just want to make a, a pass out by the tractor this way. Get a closer look at them. And uh, yeah, you can see it's actually estimating a 1.5 mile an hour tailwind right now in this direction, which is opposite direct the direction that the wind has been blowing previously. Say hello to the former. And now we'll pass over here by this tractor on the way back. Actually, looks like he's traveling down the uh, little turn road on the way back to where their other vehicles are parked. And hopefully we don't lose video if we get too low out here where the shed is going to be by by us and just as i said that we actually lost a few frames of video we should be fine though worst case i'll climb up out of it we'll make a pass over these guys and we'll head back home and end the flight and now you can see we're still showing a tailwind 1.2 miles an hour so I, I, I think it's pretty safe to say that the wind is going to be calm down here and we can land in this direction just fine. There's a blackbird. It flew by us. Tempted to uh, try to chase him down too, but we won't. We'll leave him alone. We'll head back towards home and end the flight. I know I keep saying it, and we're 40 minutes into the flight now. Um, it's been pretty enjoyable so far, though. Even, even though that... Rudder mix wasn't the culprit for the little swaying in the heading. A horse down there in the pen. My neighbor's horse. Uh, but yeah, even though that little uh, parameter didn't seem to help much, it is something I think I can rule out because it did seem to not be too laxed or too aggressive. Checking it. Um, but I guess we can move forward on to something else after this. So I'm just going to kind of fly along the tree line here and get ready to set up my landing. And uh, I guess at this point I should take the time to thank you for watching the video. 
all the way through to the end. I appreciate it. Helps the YouTube analytics and helps more people see my videos and earn more revenue and start new projects. Um, but anyway, I guess keep an eye out for what's to come. I'm not sure when I'm going to be able to fly again or what it'll be. But whatever it is, we'll try to keep it interesting and uh, you'll see it here. So I'm going to go ahead and cut power and start my flare. And there's the shop. And there's the corn, which has come up growing pretty tall since the last time I've flown. Um, but yeah, we'll go back to manual mode. And we will disarm. And we're going to stop the recording and end the flight. So thank you for watching this one and keep an eye out for the next one. Questions, comments, go below the video as always. I'll try to answer, answer them as quickly and as best I can. So thank you for watching.